All right, so at this point, you've worked through a couple of examples finding an angle measurement using um, an inverse trig function. In this video, I'm going to look to show you how we can shorten that process. These directions ask me to find angle A. I'm going to circle angle A. Angle A is still going to be my reference angle. I'm going to label the sides that are given to me in the problem, 5 being opposite, 11 being the hypotenuse. I'm going to ask myself, which trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? Sine, but since I'm using, I'm looking for an angle measurement, I'm going to use sine inverse. So I'm going to say the measure of angle A equals the sine inverse of 5 over 11. By calculating sine inverse, 5 divided by 11, that's giving me the angle measurement of A, which is 27 degrees, it's 27.0. Four, we're rounding to the nearest tenth, so we'll just say that's 27 degrees. Let's look at number seven. I'm going to follow the same process. Angle A is my reference angle. I'm going to label six as my adjacent. I'm going to label the ten as a hypotenuse. I'm going to ask myself which trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse. That's cosine. Since I'm looking for an angle, I need to use cosine inverse. So the cosine inverse of 6 over 10 adjacent over hypotenuse will give me the measurement for angle A. Let's plug that in our calculator. That gives me 53.1 degrees. And that's the measurement of angle A. Let's look at number 8, same process. I'm going to circle A as my reference angle. I'm going to label the 7 as adjacent. 12 is hypotenuse, and I'm going to ask myself which trig function uses adjacent hypotenuse, the same one we just used, cosine. So the measure of angle A equals cosine inverse of 7 divided by 12. Let's pop that in our calculator. That gives me 53 point or 54.3 degrees.